Hello everyone, welcome to an academy. This is Asta, your author educator. I am currently pursuing my post graduation in English literature from the Valencia. Well, this is an entirely new course that we are going to do on tradition and development in poetry in English literature. So I hope you like the lesson. I, as I've already said, tradition where there is tradition, there has to be changes and development. So we are going to study that. I hope you like it. Do not forget to follow me on academy. Thanks a lot. Well, tradition in its broadest sense denotes all the conventions, literary devices, and habits of expressions handed on to a writer from past. We can speak on the tradition of a specific device as of the happy ending or of a particular literary form as of the pastoral elegy or of a period as the Victorian tradition or of culture. Well, in this sense, we may use the term in order to praise a writer. It may be asserted that a writer is full of or full in the tradition. We may say he represents the great tradition. The relation of a writer to a tradition is sudden and complex and it varies from writer to writer. But two points are very obvious. Firstly, Every writer, even the humblest, even the so-called illiterate writer, begins with the tradition. His own composition, written or oral, will reflect what he has read or heard. Secondly, no writer on the other hand, no matter how imitative, can repose passively in his inherited tradition. Or in other words, I would say, he will modify it. The shifting, dynamic nature of language involves this in, it, in its every use. These two points should be kept in view if we are to understand a writer's relation to tradition. For the meaning of the relation resides in a tension between two principles, the inescapable sense of the past and the necessity of relating the inherited past to the present. When in any literary age we find a number of writers can be grouped together because they exploit similar traditions in their work. The total set of traditions of subject matter, forms, techniques and point of view Character characteristic of a group of writers in a period are called as tradition. Accordingly, we speak of the Puritan tradition, the Cavalier tradition, and the metaphysical tradition in the 17th century, the neoclassic tradition in the 18th century, and the romantic tradition in the 19th century. The term tradition is also used for a complex set of conventions common to a number of writers in various periods. In this, in this way, we speak of classical tradition, the Neoplatonic tradition or the pastoral tradition, all of which have appeared in many countries and over a number of centuries. There is nothing, either good or bad, in conformity to literary conventions or traditions as such. It all depends how fresh and effective a use of individual writer can make of them. Well, for example, Shakespeare. He was in many ways a highly conventional playwright. He was also the greatest because he was the greatest experimentalist. According to the great Livingstone, tradition is an art that represents concurrence in certain accepted methods of communication. The writer also elaborates that the tradition which does not mean simply acceptance of illusion but that a writer creates a willing suspension, suspension of disbelief for the moment which constitutes poetic faith. This statement implies that there is constant development in the growth of the mind of a poet. As opposed to tradition, we use the term invention or experiment for the inauguration by the writer of new forms, materials or mode of expressions while the resulting work is said to possess originality. The history of literature shows 
a repeated progress in innovative writers. These innovative writers break away from the reigning conventions to produce original works, only to find their inventions have been imitated by succeeding writers and that they have also served a, an establishment of a new tradition. Thus, two important dictums have been made. So, it is truly stated that the tradition of English novel is experiment and also that tradition is surely no more than the fruit of successful experiment. Now that we have got an idea about tradition, we will be talking about the interpretation of terms tradition and experiment by T.S. Eliot. Well, T.S. Eliot has elaborated these two complicated terms in his various critical treaties. Every writer must be influenced both as a man and as an artist by his time and by the place of society where he finds himself. Even in reacting against his surroundings, as many writers do, he is showing himself to be a part of them. And let us not say when we meet the theory of Eliot that that was completely obvious. If it is now accepted that the individual writer must be by nature an element formed by the forming, the forming of the society to which he belongs, then the recognition is partly due to Eliot's long stressing of this point in the days of rabid artistic individualism. In literature, as in culture as a whole, Eliot believes in the tremendous importance of tradition. In the field of literature, Eliot says, heresy is the result, result of traditionless authors searching for the background and imagery which only a tradition can give them and which are essential for a writer. A common vocabulary and a common background are necessary if members of a society are to be able to make society or make themselves at all comprehensive to each other. Eliot points that since the deterioration of the Christian and classical cultural framework, authors have been searching many far-fetched and dangerous systems of thought and belief for a new artistic system of expression. So in imputing the contemporary artistic babel to the lack of the healthy and active tradition, Eliot shows great insight, a balance between the control of a system and the freedom of inspiration is essential to art. But the problem of the need for a common artistic background leads us on the objective value of literary tradition as expounded by Eliot in his later works. An author writes for an audience and if he is not to have any significance at all, he must, he must be understood by that audience. This would seem to make necessary a common element in all education up to a larger or later stage for upon this depends possibility of a, need, of a general audience, the possibility both for the author being able to communicate with people in all walks of life. Eliot always hopes for a larger audience and even hopes to become popular although he does not usually write with that specific purpose, the problem of how the writer is to make himself understood, which Eliot has called the problem of communication, is a theme which constantly preoccupies him, both in his critical writing and also in his poetry and plays. Without the discipline and basis of a common tradition, this struggle for meaning becomes something like an impossibility and the literary world for him is inclined to break upon or break up into isolated individuals and smaller groups. So when this happens, writers obviously lose almost all social significance and since almost activities 
require such a significance, it means that they also lose all their justification for writing. For Eliot, the word tradition implies growth and so change is an absolutely necessary element of a living literary tradition. It is a partial or complete break with the literary past that is in danger and ignorance either purposeful or accidental of what has gone before. As we have noted, even an apparently sweeping literary revolt can be perfectly traditional in so far as it indicates a recognition of what has gone before. But sometimes if a revolt is extremely or very extreme, it may seem at first that its supporters have broken completely with tradition. Eliot himself and James Joyce also perhaps the greatest leaders in the revolt against Victorians, Georgian schools of English literature were both completely traditional in the fullest scene and yet it was only after some time and much hot controversy that they were generally accepted as holding important places in the main development of English literature. So we see that according to Eliot, a literary tradition aims in its development at realizing the potentialities of language and form and that its development is closely bound to the development of the society and culture of which it is a part. This much of his theory of literary development is clear and seems to be true but two of the assumptions of what is a classic. It is true that each good poet does something for a literature that can never be done again but the reason that it can be never done again is that no one else could write the poetry which he has already written. Each poet is a person with just such a character at just such a time under just such circumstances. So thus tradition is obviously necessary to art but the conscious cultivation of the sense of tradition by the creative artist at all periods would not seem to be necessarily or even profitable. When a society is in a healthy state developing with the minimum degree of fiction, its culture is so much part of its life and growth and its educational system is so closely controlled by the needs of its culture that the sense of past is an integral part of the activity. At such times, the very fact that a person is an artist, artist implies that he is a traditional artist. This leads to an important point that the conscious search for a tradition implies a culture which has to some extent lost touch with its past and with the values of its past, a culture in some way decay, decayed or disintegrated. So it will not be false if we say that Eliot's attitude towards the conscious cultivation of a sense of tradition was an indication of a state of emergency in European culture. So that's all with this lesson. I hope you liked it. Do not forget to follow me on an academy and read all the lessons. Thanks a lot.